Hey there, I'm LaShawn Smith, and today we're going to discuss the huge economic opportunity around low code, the Microsoft Power Platform, what Microsoft is doing to help skill 25 million people worldwide, and most importantly, how you can get involved today. I'm joined by Charles Lamana, the CVP of Power Platform. Charles, how are you? Doing well. Thanks for having me on the show today, LaShawn. Fantastic. So this is going to be a great session. I wanted to um, really start with the foundational question around why is Microsoft investing in this type of event for career switchers and students who are trying to learn uh, low code and discover more about Power Platform? Yep, yeah, so something that we're seeing across the entire technology and software space is that there's just this explosion of demand for more applications, more automation, more bot, more data understanding. Um, and we forecast over 150 million new jobs will be created over the next five years in the tech and software space. Um, but the challenge is there just aren't enough developers and coders to fill all those positions. Uh, and something that we really believe at Microsoft is that with the Power Platform and with no code, low code tools, like the Power Platform includes, like Power BI, Power Apps, Power Automate, Power Virtual Agent, we can actually help a very broad set of folks enter the software development profession and actually be able to participate and contribute to this digital transformation that every company and every industry is going through. So we really think that we're gonna be able to help our customers by helping build out a really talented and ready workforce on the Power Platform, and also go help that workforce by basically discovering and creating a whole new class of job, which is that low code developer position. Um, and we're really excited to do both of those things moving forward. That's great. I mean, what do you think as you're talking about this moment in time we have to really in um, uh, you know, take advantage of uh, this low code opportunity, what do you think is going on in the economy that's that's special or unique uh, you know, at this period of time that we haven't seen maybe in 10, 20, 50 years? Yeah, yeah, as I'm sure everybody feels right now, it's uh, certainly a unique situation in the year 2020. Um, and I mean, there's two big aspects to it. The first is, of course, COVID-19 has driven uh, what economists are calling the great lockdown, which is the idea that folks really, I mean, a lot of people aren't going out, restaurants are closed, the emergence of curbside pickup, telehealth, um, remote education. There's a very different landscape because you just the way everybody is conducting themselves is just fundamentally different. Uh, and Satya, the CEO of Microsoft, has said that we've seen two years of digital transformation in just two months. And that's because of that first aspect. Just the way everybody is, is operating is pretty different. But there's a second piece to it. Uh, and that's what we're seeing is that um, basically we're entering one of the most, uh, I'd say, daunting economic situations uh, since World War II. The World Bank has come out and forecast uh, around 5 to 6% GDP contraction worldwide, or the United States specifically. Uh, and as well as calling for the worst recession in 70 years. So um, it's a tough economic situation for a lot of people and also a lot of companies that are actually trying to find ways to succeed and, and survive by getting uh, a lot done with the same amount of resources or even less. So those two things are really driving a whole bunch of change right now, particularly in the technology space. Yeah, no, that's a great insight. Now, um, I want to go back to something you mentioned. Uh, you started to talk through some of the uh, various products in the Power Platform portfolio, uh, you know, around creating chatbots, uh, AI, uh, apps, and automation. Uh, there's a ton of choices. So first, let's start um, with, uh, you know, how how did we as Microsoft come to um, kind of select those uh, common areas and those categories? Yep. Yeah. So we we, we went and respond to where we were seeing the most demand for professional developers and coders uh, from our customers, uh, other large companies, small medium business companies, and what we found is that a lot of com a lot of our, our customers were just struggling to understand the, their data. About eighty five percent of companies don't have a good way to understand unstructured data, for example, um, and that's where Power BI is so incredibly useful. Uh, and helps people get a whole bunch of uh, great insights and make smarter decisions for their business uh, is because of that low code data capability. For automation, in the case of Power Automate, we saw that something like 50% of all digital activities that are done in the workplace could be automated with technology that exists mm -hmm. today. There just weren't enough developers to create that automation. So we released Power Automate to go really close that gap as much as possible. In the case of Power Apps, we were forecasting 500 million new apps in the next five years are going to be created. And for perspective, that's more than all the apps created in the last 40 years, um, right? Uh, longer than I've been alive. So that's a lot of apps. Um, and 
of course, the best way to go address that is use something like Power Apps to make it so anybody can start to become a developer to go create those web and mobile experiences. That's excellent. Now, you talked about data and it's kind of, uh, I think, kind of core to um, uh, almost every business challenge as uh, folks are running through digital um, uh, transformation efforts and kind of reinventing themselves in this economy. Uh, I want to come to, I want to move over to something uh, that, again, to these choices that people have to make with all of these different products uh, that they might use. I almost look at it, uh, and I'm simplifying, obviously, but, you know, if you look at the office suite, you know, we have PowerPoint and Excel and Outlook and, you know, these programs that have these different um, capabilities, but they're built to work together. And when I look at Power Platform, uh, they're definitely built to work together, even though they have these specific capabilities. Um, how should someone who's just approaching uh, all of these capabilities think about sequencing um, what they learn first? So, so they're looking at Power Platform, they're like, this is great. And I just heard Charles Lamana tell us about all the goodness with Power BI and, and Automate. Um, where do I start? Yeah, so I would say um, the best way uh, we found uh, people learn the Power Platform is to go try to find a way to apply it as fast as possible. Because that's what we're really focused on with Power Platform. It's not something you have to go to school for, for you know, four or eight years or something you have to go like to full-time boot camp. The idea is that in an afternoon, you can sign up and build your first app or your first dashboard or your first bot or your first flow. So I'd say, go think about what do you do every day at work right now that you wish was different? Where do you wish there was an app? Where do you wish you had more insights in the data? Where do you wish you had a bot that could help you automate tasks or talk to talk to users or customers and go build it? Um, and you know, it may not be perfect the first try, but it'll, it'll get you a whole bunch of great skills and it'll also start delivering a kind of value to where you work. Um, and I'd say may, maybe you're, you're not employed right now and you're looking for a good uh, opportunity, a good place to check something out. I said, go to MS Learn. Uh, go to Microsoft Learn, see what courses are available there. And I would say focus on whatever calls to you the most, whatever sounds the most exciting and makes you the most passionate. Because you can go build a career of, around just Power BI or around just Power Apps or just Power Automate or just Power Virtual Agent. We think there's a lot of opportunity for people that go mix and match those skills because a typical solution is going to use more than one Power Platform product. Um, just like when you use Office, you use more than just Excel or just PowerPoint or Word you actually use a whole bunch of different products. And I really like that analogy, uh, LaShawn, that you made. That makes a lot of sense. Um, so now let's talk about um, how folks can think about getting employed, right? So um, as someone is building this set of low code capabilities and skill set, um, you know, if you were in their shoes, how would you, how would you speak to and market your personal skills once you were a power platform professional? Yeah, so I think there, there's an amazing community. Uh, there's actually several amazing digital communities around the Power Platform. So whether it's the Power Platform community website or the Power Platform LinkedIn uh, jobs group, there's a, a, a ton of different places where you can go really not only show off your skills, but help other people be successful, which is one of the best ways to go build that reputation and that awareness of what you can do with the Power Platform. And of course, whether it's Twitter or YouTube or even Twitch, if you want to go generate more content, there's just a huge appetite from people out there to go learn more and go consume that. So I'd say get involved in the communities, go publish content, um, participate in, in conferences like this. There's just a lot of opportunities that you can do from your home, at a which at a time like this is so critical, um, where you can go find other uh, positions or other uh, workplace uh, activities or placement. Makes a ton of sense. You said something around, um, you know, just kind of getting started and tackling some of the, the pain points that might be in your organization, or if you're looking for work, uh, kind of using your skills. I mean, that's so critical. I know you are a person who definitely has uh, um, uh, kind of a bias for action, you know, just start doing the work, listening to the customers and, and iterate from there. L let's go into some of these backgrounds that people do have, right? It's not like folks show up to something or a tool set like Power Platform and they don't know how the world works. Like they have some background and knowledge uh, in so many different things. I'm always amazed by all the unique skills that people bring to the table. Uh, I wanted to switch to kind of like industries where you've seen some specific wins. So we know that 
Um, these products we're talking about can be applied in almost every industry, but wanted to see if there was one or two customers that you could bring up uh, in specific industries where um, it can kind of help people give uh, get an idea of uh, how real people are solving problems with the Power Platform. Yeah, I would say uh, an industry where we've seen a lot of really interesting stories over the last couple of months is going to be in, in telcos, so telecommunications. Um, and what's interesting is that in a lot of these examples, the solutions that were built out for companies like Telstra, which is one of the largest telcos uh, in Australia, New Zealand area, or T-Mobile, which is one of the largest telcos in the Americas, um, is that they were built not by coders or IT professionals, but actually by people who are in the field. And just like you said, LaShawn, these are people that know the business process. So in the case of Telstra, uh, there's a guy, Nathan Backers, who actually built an amazing suite of applications to go help field technicians go do a be better job with maintenance, customer support, learning, alerts, all those types of things. Uh, and he built that from a background as a technician. Uh, and now he's helped to go build a whole bunch of amazing solutions to really help Telstra transform and be more efficient, which has really helped to go accelerate his own personal and career growth. Or in the case of T-Mobile, um, they had to go respond to basically the COVID crisis in the United States. Um, and they had to go find a way of how do you manage which store should be open? How do you go clean the stores the right way? How do you socially distance? And they had to keep the stores open because they support, you know, uh, healthcare workers, firefighters, policemen. So they're an essential service. And they actually had a set of business analysts from the retail department go build out a bunch of power mm -hmm. apps, 48 hours to go do that. So kind of those are two just amazing stories where it's great, great impact, great influence for those companies, but also the ability for them to really go kind of transform or reimagine their career. Um, and in the case of T-Mobile, those business analysts, I think like Greg Soto and someone else were actually featured in, in one of the Microsoft conferences with a video from Satya Nadella. So, I mean, it's just amazing to see kind of the reach you can have so quickly uh, and such big impact. That, that's fantastic. And it's one of those things, I think sometimes it can feel whether you um, are, you know, a freelancer or working on your own or working in a very large organization, you know, that where do I start? And how do I, you know, kind of feel empowered to go do? A lot of times, I think some of our technical tools don't really uh, enable that. And Power Platform really is uh, kind of rooted in that empowerment story. So those are fantastic, uh, um, you know, stories to hear from others. When you were kind of talking about those examples, there's this kind of natural uh, separation or, or categorization in business applications around where we're engaging with the customer, you know, kind of the customer experience, uh, and then kind of the back of office and all the operations where, you know, you have to run the business, right? All your logistics and finance and other things. And I know that people build power apps for, for both of those. Um, as you think about the different ways uh, that um, uh, people build applications on the back of office. Uh, are there any things around automation or any ideas that you could share with people um, to kind of, again, give them some some uh, some starter ideas on how others are, are using Power Platform for their back of office? Yep. Yeah, I'd say probably one of the most common uh, tasks, which is automated, has to be like invoice processing or accounts payable, accounts receivable. And what, what we see is, a ton of our customers will use Power Automate um, because it not only has API automation, it also has UI automation or robotic process automation, as well as AI understanding uh, to do things like receive invoices, actually extract structured understanding of those invoices, which are scanned PDFs or scanned JPEGs or PNGs, um, and then do routing and data input. Um, and there's just so many customers that we've worked with where this has allowed people that work in finance or, or work in order management to move away from, I'd say, low level data manipulation, data movement to higher level cash flow understanding, cash flow forecasting, partner build, uh, partner relationship building, things like that. Um, and that's just one of the most common use cases we've seen. And I'd say if anyone out there is doing the directory of copying data between different systems all the time, that's the perfect use case for Power Automate. Um, go check it out. Probably in a day or two, you could build something that would eliminate 50, 60, 70% of that uh, manual activity you do, unless you go to higher, higher order, higher cognitive, like I'd say more engaging, more creative work, uh, as opposed to just data movement. 
Now, yeah, and so those are great examples. So from the T-Mobile to that example, you know, the T-Mobile, we're talking more of the front of the house and how to engage with the customer. And then uh, a lot of this paperless uh, type of opportunity, it's kind of like anywhere you see a piece of paper, that's a, a digital transformation opportunity, especially in today, because, you know, you want to collaborate with coworkers and customers and, and, and other folks who may not actually be in the same room. So, um, you know, once you have this piece of paper or that process digitized, there's so much you can unlock. So that's a, that's a powerful opportunity. Now, for people who are trying to connect all of this together, we have our um, capabilities in the product. We have, you know, kind of these pain points and the processes that, you know, folks are going to be uniquely uh, qualified to identify and address. And then there's a lot of the interpersonal skills. And I know that's not really core to um, what Power Platform is enabling, but it's really important for anyone who is learning to understand how to interface with coworkers and, and talk about the, um, uh, the requirements and those types of things. Uh, I, I wanted to switch to you as a critical thinker, someone who can tackle um, uh, you know, problem solving, uh, and then be able to interface with all your coworkers and, uh, and kind of, you know, solve these problems, you know, tell me a bit more about your journey on how you built up, not just your technical skills, but also, uh, those interpersonal skills, which are so critical to building an app. Yep. Yeah. I would say one of the most, uh, for, for me, I think this would apply for anyone that's kind of going and looking at development is in a lot of cases, you're building solutions for somebody else. Right. Like you rarely, it's pretty rare where the app is just for you. It's probably for you and your team or for another team that you work with. Um, and one of the most important, like I'd say experiences is this idea of having deep empathy for the users of the application. Um, and in the past for programmers, a lot of times the best way to do that was to do something that Steve blank, uh, who's a startup author is like, get out, get out of the building. Just actually go sit with a customer and watch them use your technology, watch them use your software. Uh, and that can be eye opening because you may not think it's a big deal to do seven clicks to take one action because you do it once a day. Well, if the customer does it 200 times a day, it's pretty annoying. So, you know, just really eye opening for that experience. But what's great about Power Platform and Low Code is you have this real unique ability to do collab, like real time collaboration, real time co authoring real-time creation together with the users of your uh, solution, whether it's in Power BI for dashboards and reports or Power Apps for apps or Power Automate for bots or Power Virtual Agent for chat-based experiences. Um, you can actually lean into that customer uh, empathy, lean into that true customer experience. Um, and that's one of the things that uh, I'd say, uh, it took a lot of effort for me to go to grow those skills. Um, I've sat in, in the Microsoft support call center in Texas, answered phone calls from customers filing support tickets. I know I've gone site visits around the world, tons of great videos and community. So I've done a bunch of that. Power Platform helps make that a lot easier, <laughs> you know, you, because you just are so much closer to the yeah. users and the consumers of the stuff you build, so. That's great. Now let's tie that into uh, the technical part as well, right? So, so it's great to hear your part of that journey and hopefully that inspires folks for how they can find their path there. On the technical side, you know, you started off as, as an engineer, but not as a software engineer. Uh, and as you found your way, you kind of, you know, saw the, the power of software to, you know, kind of transform the world. Um, I thought it'd be helpful, maybe you just share a bit about your personal journey uh, as you discovered software as a career opportunity. Yeah, so it, um, I'd say my, uh, the way I joke and say, I did the brute force, like the, the N squared algorithm to go find the right career for me. Um, cause, uh, I actually started as an aerospace engineer, um, you know, like airplanes, rockets, that type of thing. Uh, and I was fortunate enough to get an internship, uh, one of the largest, uh, aeronautics company in, in the Southeast of the U S, um, they're early in my college career. And I remember I went there and for the whole summer, the, the guy who sat next to me in the cubicle, his only job for 30 years was to calculate the weight of paint that you apply to an airplane, one particular type of airplane. Um, and basically my... <laughs> I'm sorry, what was that? I said, goodness, no, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, but, and then, and then my, the team I was on, our job was about how do you upload maps into the plane? And like, how do you do it? Because everything is like 50 year old technology. So, and just, I was like, this, this is not the profession for me. So I did, I, I immediately pivoted out of that. I tried chemical engineering. I tried pre-med. Um, and then, you know, actually pretty late in my, uh, college career, right around 20 years old is when I actually discovered software and programming. And that's kind of where I got hooked because uh, 
I got <clears throat> fortunately looped into a really exciting research project around protein, protein uh, interaction prediction stuff in the, the engineering department. And that, that was just so much fun because you could just sit down and I mean, I'd code so, super late into the night. Um, cause just you, you know, whatever you write, you'd actually produce an outcome right away. And that's just what got me so, so interested and so excited in the software and, uh, and kind of that biased action that I have today for software always goes back to that, which is the, the, the magic is that you can get so much done so fast. And um, back then what was fast what is still slow compared to what you can do with low code stuff this, these days with power platform. But, um, but just anyway, that really tight feedback loop is what got me hooked and it, the rest has been hit is, is history. I was able to get a job at Microsoft out of college, which was awesome. I uh, learned a ton. So that's kind of my, how I made that pivot over to software. Yeah, no, I mean, it's great to see that thread. And uh, I think so much, I mean, you've even applied kind of your iteration approach to kind of finding uh, the best feature set for you, right? I'm um, kind of using it, extending that that metaphor maybe a bit much, but, you know, you had to find the right thing for you professionally. And, uh, you know, that was also through iteration. And so I think that's a great set of lessons there. Uh, we don't always just stumble on the perfect place uh, right at the beginning. Um, for for folks who are trying to uh, uh, figure out time, and this is this is again, you know, we have uh, a CVP for Microsoft. You're very successful. I think it's always helpful to uh, give people a little insight to how you tackle um, organization. And so uh, I know everyone's going to have a different system, and people should really play to their own strengths. But as you juggle all the things in your life, what what are some of the the tips that you use uh, to make sure you have enough time to prioritize the most important um, professional investments. And I think that's really critical since um, if people are trying to reskill or upskill, uh, they also have to make time. So they have to be really thoughtful about how they organize. So maybe one or two tips on how you personally organize your professional life to uh, stay on track. I say I am, uh... I am hardcore about managing my calendar. Uh, I, I use Outlook, of course, um, but I mean, I book time for for working out. I work time to catch up on email. I work time. I book time to to think about like plans in the future, and I also make sure I reserve time to actually be learning every single week. And um, that last one is really important because I talk about this with people all the time at Microsoft and outside of Microsoft, which is you always have to be investing in yourself. And you do that by learning different skills, learning what's a big trend in the industry where you work or, or even go to fields that are totally unrelated because it'll just get the creative juices flowing and who knows how it'll actually apply. Um, and basically I just say is always find time to be learning. And that's different for everybody. That could be watching YouTube videos, that could be watching TED Talks, that could be reading books or blogs or newsletters. Find the medium that works for you and make sure that you create time, even if it's during like the work day or work week, to go learn uh, and, and just always be growing. Because the reality is, say low code is a big deal now. 10 years ago, cloud infrastructure providers like IaaS was the big deal. 10 years before that, it was the internet. 10 years before that, it was the PC. Things are always changing. Uh, and one of the best things you can invest in is your own knowledge and capabilities. So you always have the skill sets to, to make an impact, have a great job, have a great profession. Um, so I say, go spend that time to learn. Um, and I know it's super hard, but he, even I, I think I like, I'm pretty busy, but I still always, I have a set of blogs, a set of books that I'm always reading and always learning from. No, that's fantastic. Um, I know we have a set of resources around uh, Microsoft Docs and MS Learn. We have events like this, uh, new in-product capabilities to help people learn. Uh, so uh, I think uh, folks um, are, are aware of that. Um, as we're wrapping up, uh, two questions, one, what do we need from the community to serve them better? Yeah, I would say the biggest thing is give us feedback at Microsoft. Um, you like we track the idea site, which is a, a place on the community website where you can actually vote for features. We track that religiously and actually we have a backlog that we review with all of our leadership team every month to see what progress we're making against those top ideas. So keep the feedback flowing, keep the suggestions flowing. You're the users of the power platform. You're the ones that can tell us what's the most important. You're the one that can keep guiding us to build the best possible solution that we can. So I say that would be the, keep the feedback coming, please. That's great. 
Um, so we have this massive opportunity that you shared with us. Uh, so I think that's undeniable. We have this great set of tools uh, that Microsoft is offering in the low-code space. And then we have different approaches for folks to get started and stay engaged. Um, I guess my final question will be, um, what's the best way for folks who are watching uh, today's session to, uh, to take that action? What should they go do next? I, like I would say, if you're if you're someone that likes to do to learn by doing, just go and sign up. Anyone can sign up. No credit card, free trial. You can sign up in 30 seconds and just go start tinkering around with the product. Um, and if you're the type that like more structured learning, go to Microsoft Learn. We have oodles and oodles and tons of content that you can watch written in video. Um, can get you started so you feel comfortable giving it a try. Both are great options, but both have a, a huge amount of material and both really take minutes to get started. So I'd say go choose one and just go for it. Fantastic. It's almost like you've just given people some free money here, Charles. Like if they go invest in themselves, they're going to create their own economic uh, opportunities. So that's fantastic. Well, thank you for joining us today. This was great to hear your story, some of these uh, opportunities that folks have and uh, appreciate the time. Awesome. Thank you, LaShawn. Appreciate everybody for listening in. Take care, everyone. Cheers.